Around this time, my dad happened to be at a family wedding and he started talking to the videographer. There was a guy named Kerry Sims who I was later introduced to. And Kerry was interested in making movies as well. In fact, I wrote a feature script, it's untitled, but it's about an old Chevy that uh, can talk and forms a friendship with this kid. Where are we gonna make it? The project never happened, but as it turned out, that was the best script that I could have written at the time because not only did it lead to a collaboration with Kerry for many years, but a great friendship, which we still have to this day. With our next project, I was determined not to produce another stinker. So I was hesitant to write out a script. Rather, I wrote it to Stravinsky's The Ride of Spring. The idea was when there was a texture change in the music, the next shot would come along and the composition itself would keep the movie from dragging and it worked. David's direction was run this way, run over there, okay, Chris and Whitley, run by here. And basically all day long, all it was was run, run, run. Thank God I was a lot younger back then. Kerry Sims had some editing equipment at his house at the time, and I knew we were going to be able to cut the movie, so I didn't worry about that at all when we shot it. The Forbidden Zone earned the studio its first award from the American Film Institute, and it's still a short film that I'm proud of. I signed up with Salmon's, the local cable provider in Fort Worth at the time, and took their free public access video course so I could use their editor for our movies. But before any of that could happen, May 25th, 1983 arrived, the day I'd been waiting for for years. Uh, yes, it was the day I graduated from R.L. Pasco High School, but I'm talking about the premiere of Return of the Jedi. I dragged my father to see Return of the Jedi and after that sat him down to screen The Forbidden Zone and he saw The Forbidden Zone and he saw what a difference having an editor made and uh, he didn't hesitate. He co-signed for a bank loan for $5,000 and we got my Panasonic editing decks. He built a permanent bench for them there in the office and we were set up. We couldn't do dissolves. We still had to do fades in the camera. It was just straight offline editing and we would uh, edit or do rough cuts of our six final movies using those decks and do several audio dramas using those decks. I love those Panasonic editors. In fact, when we first got them, I was just messing around learning how to set up edits and we had nothing offhand to edit right away. So I took some clips from TJ Hooker and got creative and made myself a TV star. My favorite bit that we did came from a TJ Hooker episode in which Leonard Nimoy guest starred, and I decided to try my hand at a little dialogue replacement. Fuck! After doing those little bits and learning the basics with the editors, I decided to recut the Forbidden Zone and tightened it up, and then I felt ready to move on to our next project. Elise on Life, in a lot of ways, it was like starting over again because we were gonna do a narrative movie with dialogue and we were gonna be able to edit it. And I wasn't gonna rely on music as a crutch. We were gonna try to make a real bona fide movie. But it was just me and Chris Freeland, basically. And when I'm in frame, Chris is behind the camera. And when Chris is in frame, I'm behind the camera. There's some two shots of both of us and there's nobody behind the camera. We just set the camera on the tripod and let it run. I made out a will. You're a bit young for that. No, I'm not. Come on, Michael, you're only 19. Yeah, Leslie was only 16. How old do you have to be to die? David gets in his car and drives off, and I, I chase him. And uh, It was a lot of fun because uh, David had found a way to use his editing decks to set the knob on a certain way, and it actually made the camera action go a little bit faster. Elise on Life is watchable, barely, 
The highlight of the whole experience for me was having our first film premiere. Now I can't even remember where we had it. My dad was afraid nobody would be able to find it, so he took this piece of wood and he scratched on it, David Hall film, and drew an arrow. And that was the grand beginning to my film premieres. I now had editing decks, but I had to pay them off, so I had some new business cards made and opened up a new wing to Suburbia Studios. I began videotaping weddings and editing them, and did that for a couple of years. And that led to a great gig with Miss National Teen in 1986. In 1987, I began doing corporate videos, including one for the American Cancer Society, and business was good until I moved to L.A. in 1988. But back in 1983, when we were doing a lease on life, my mom took a job at the Dean of Students' Office at TCU, so I can enroll there in the fall as a freshman and go tuition-free. I found it a little more difficult than classes at Pascal had been, so I said, let's not make a movie for a while, let's use the editing decks and do three more Captain Triangle episodes, 14, 15, and 16. We basically brought in other characters. First time we'd done this with Triangle, we brought in uh, Chris Breland. First time that I worked on Captain Triangle was episode 14, where I played a Mr. Smith. Greetings, Dr. Ramos. So, what have you found out from that Captain Triangle fellow? Well, tell uh, me I, everything y'all said this morning. Uh, how did you know I spoke with him this morning? I know everything, Mr. Smith. I have my geometric sphere and I see everything. And we recruited my girlfriend at the time, Jenny Cannell, to play the evil Polygon, and she did great. And I'm so glad to see you suffer. I've been waiting for this moment. Captain Triangle is so boring. I'm sure he's not as exciting as I am. No, he's not as evil. He's not evil at all. Yes, I'm so evil. Oh, yes, yes, you are, and yes. I love it. David did a great job with episode 16. It was all time to music. You know, Rhombus was sort of at his, at his peak. Uh, you know, I had the voice down, and uh, David had Triangle and Melkor, and there was this great chemistry between me and David doing Melkor. We could just sit down and say, okay, here's what we got to accomplish in the scene. We got three minutes to do it, and the rest of it, we'll just kind of let it happen. And uh, we ended up with some classic Captain Triangle. I don't see you again. I want you to have this. It's the love tablet. Dr. Ramos gave me it. Now okay, I must go. You. We only have 24 minutes left in the episode. We've got to hurry. And that's where these evil brothers evolved from, from the character of Dr. Ramos, because he was real, he was real wise and, you know, <laughs> you know, a little, a little short guy. So, so we wanted to take that from the radio show and put it in, in film, yeah. visualize it. So we shorten their legs a little. We kind of brought in some triangle elements as far as our voices for Rancor and Itch. You know, when the first idea first came up, it was a real short film, and uh, we managed to expand it. Uh, everybody was really involved with it, and uh, it was a very creative idea, a very unique idea. Um, you know, we had a tight schedule and we had a lot of fun doing it. We shot it over a spring break. The whole first day's filming had to be canned because the backdrops were shining and we couldn't tell it in the camera at the time. But they were all shiny and they were supposed to be black. It was supposed to be nothing in the background. It looked like cardboard and painted over, which is exactly what it was. It looked really bad. Camera placement is real important because, I, like, if the camera's at an angle and one person is on left side of the screen, the other person's on the right, and they throw a punch and it doesn't come within four feet of them, then they go, oh, it looks silly. But if you have a f one person in the foreground and one kind of in the background coming over, over the shoulder shot, the same punch can look excellent. And with Shadow Games, it all came together. I continued to rely on music to compose a movie to, but this time I took it to a higher level. Now kill the witch! My dad contributed a lot to that movie. He built the rigs for Rankhorn Inch's legs. He also built the Rankhorn Inch sensorium set. I remember when we screened a rough cut of Shadow Games for my dad, his eyes just lit up and he laughed. He loved it. Shadow Games won a major award from the American Film Institute, the studio's second award, and it was shown on the movie channel. Add to that, I got invited to Hollywood to accept the award. So Shadow Games was a great experience and remains my favorite of our undergraduate movies.